Good afternoon, everybody. We are back with some more Scrap Mechanic Survival, and today I am back with my base, and... I'm sorry I keep on, like, kind of making the last three videos the same thing. I will be expanding out... Oh my gosh, it froze. Okay. I will be expanding out to more, you know, different projects soon, but I wanted to quickly do a tutorial on how to make a flawless, within quotes and a star at the end, base defending system uh, based on spud turrets. So, I've got lots of questions from the last episode about how to build these turrets right here. And in fact, I am going to show you how by deconstructing this turret and building a new one. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward actually. I also, if you saw any changes from the last video is I put the three turret guns back down to one turret because it wastes a whole lot of ammo and it's not necessary. So having two turrets with just one gun on them works a lot better than just, you know, two turrets with three guns on them. And also, what I've changed here was added this. I can probably make this either a two turret or one turret gun. I'm not entirely sure yet. Uh, I'm also going to need to move this gun. I don't know why that's off centered. <laughs> but if you guys want to turn on how to make this, I can, you know, also do that too. But let's get right into it. So, what you are going to need to build a turret is controllers. Let's actually just do one right now. Let's just I don't have any controllers on me, but we can get that situated real quick. Alrighty then. Okay, in order to make a turret that works, you're going to need at least two or three, depending on what kind of turret you're making, but you're going to need two or three uh, controllers. They can be level one, that's just fine. You're going to need uh, four, at least four logic gates in order to make the actual logic work, and uh, three level five sensors. I want to know if it might be possible to just do it with two, but I I don't think it is to do it really well. And then, of course, you need a spud gun, multiple spud gun, maybe two or so. So you really don't need that many materials. It just takes a lot of component kits to get the controllers and upgrade the sensors. So I'm going to actually move this turret right here uh, to another location. Uh, I've connected it with a pipe underwater, so we're just going to just move this this way. I'm out of wood, so I'm going to need to go mining for wood pretty shortly. Of course, naturally, as I start recording and start doing things, so the sun goes down and it makes it impossible to see. So we're just going to wait out, <laughs> wait out the night. Actually, I'll show off the current status of the defense system and how it works against the raids. And yeah, and then in the morning, we'll get to actual tutorial on how to actually build these things. In the final minutes before the raid, I'm actually going to show you what I have set up right here is the turret status or really ammo status system right here. It is basically each turret connector will have its own ammo case or crate so that I can you know get everything working and it'll just kind of show it off and I can just easily put all the ammo here and easily and not have to worry about moving all over the place just to refill the things with ammo so I think they're all set up I destroyed that turret so hopefully there's not going to be a lot of robots on that shore or else that would be kind of embarrassing but this one should work fine but I'm going to need to add at least one or two more across the shoreline in order to make it fully functional we got about 30-ish seconds, maybe less until the raid, and I believe the next thing to do is just stand right here and watch everything unfold. Like, I don't even... Well, I'll have my spud gun out. I only have, like, 50 or so ammo, a little bit over 50, and I'll just, you know, show it off. Because I don't really even need to do anything in this case. It's the system is on, and everything works. I think. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> That'll be really embarrassing if it doesn't work. Oh, boy. Alright, this is a level 6 wave 1 raid, and you can see all the farm bots coming in, um, doing their thing, but they can't handle this. They can't handle the turrets at all. They're taking swings at the turrets, though. I will say that. That's definitely something that's new, and kind of unexpected, to be honest. But, it's pretty okay. Uh, the front gate is always defended. This choke point is working really well. The AI have a hard time pathfinding sometimes, but... That's okay. And now if we go over to this side in which there are, a, I think there's a tote bot or something like that. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, there's a little tote bot right here just chilling. I'm not sure if it's in the right path. I can't see. <laughs> we'll just look through here. All right. There she goes. <laughs> see, that's a bit overkill. So I think I can just make this two turrets instead of three because that was pretty aggressive. But yeah, so overall, as you saw, I didn't even shoot a single shot at all like I there was no nothing I didn't even swing my hammer I just looked and all the robots were killed luckily there were no robots that ended up over on this side or farm bots oh shoot stop stop <laughs> I'm your friend don't you see uh sorry about that 
but yeah, so nothing. Everything, everything was perfect. Pretty much, pretty much flawless. I didn't have to touch or raise a finger really. I think standing there is better because sometimes they'll go after me if I stand at other worlds or other places, but that's okay. So let's just turn off the system real quick. Let's see if I can get past this turret right here. And then wait till the morning, I'll clean things up and then I'll show you guys how to exactly do this. So what we're gonna do now is actually finally <laughs> build a turret. It's daytime, I just planted some more potatoes. We're gonna expand that farm out to get more potatoes at a time, but for now we're just gonna do what we can. All right, so we've got not a lot of wood, but we don't need a lot of materials, of raw materials, just having bearings and, what's the word? Maybe pipe pieces, but wood is also good. I just use that because it's cheap and that's what I got. So one thing, I'm going to make a scanning turret as you guys can tell on this coastline the robots will be building up right around here if not other places are similar so we're actually going to actually go closer to the shore because there is not a lot of sensing distance that you can get so it's unfortunate that the senses are only 20 uh, blocks long so hopefully there can be a mod or something once all the mods come out that let you use you know higher range sensors or something like that but for now we'll just do with what we got we've got as you can see i just built a pillar it's all connected to the farm place one bearing you can use a pipe piece or whatever i'm just using wood two and then three oops <laughs> that's not where it goes and three right there it's perfect and so once you get that you can just literally put a spud turret or a spud gun right here I think this should be a decent distance from the shoreline. I'm not entirely sure, but we'll, we'll find out in the raid tonight. So let's just get this set up beforehand. All right, so you got that. You just put two on the side. There are some turret, I've seen prototypes with the sensors directly on this side, but you lose actually a bit of resolution in my opinion. So making them spread out one more. And in fact, you could probably do two more, but I'm gonna keep it at one. And you just get three of these sensors level five that'll take i forget exactly how many it takes it's like eight or seven component kits to get these to level five all right and that's pretty simple set these to 20 and you've got them at 20 and now what i'm going to do actually is put all of the component and or component kits and control kits which I actually have the controls over on the wall right there, but I'm gonna build them right here connected to the thing just to show that you doesn't really matter where they are, but I just wanted to keep them a little more safe, but this, this should be fine. So you're gonna want first is two controllers. I put them on the sides. I'm actually gonna put these right here so that they're a little bit underwater and don't get destroyed by any swimming bots that happen to get, you know, not, not let through or let through. So let's just connect these to the first two. These will be the left and right controllers. And I know it's kind of ugly because it's on this little side piece, but we're gonna have a middle controller right here and that will be at the bottom. So the key to getting this turret to follow, you know, robots is to make sure that this isn't on a loop. It's gonna be at its limit, but it can, can only go once it's triggered, maybe like 225, that'll turn it over to this side at a max and on this one do the same thing just make it not looped but at its limit and to 225 i probably should just do 180 but it's you know can never be too sure and so basically if once you get there these will be controlled however <laughs> that sentence didn't really make any sense however i will say you won't be connecting these these sensors directly to the controllers. You're going to want a sort of indicator right here, a kind of a trigger with, uh, what are these called? Logic gates? Yeah, logic gates. <laughs> They're all going to be ores. Honestly, this is kind of ugly, but you can do it however you want. Uh, there's easier ways to do it. Just have three ore gates and I have it left, right, and middle. And so basically the left con or right, <laughs> right sensor goes to the right left sensor goes to the left and middle sensor goes to left and right so you might think it goes into the middle but no it goes to the left and right or you can make it go to the middle and have the middle connect to uh left and right but it's it's you know it's better to have your middle connect to the left and right <laughs> easier so once you do that 
you just connect these two OR gates to this one so that this middle one will be triggered no matter what happens. Um, and that is in order to make sure that the once say you have one gets triggered right here, it starts turning to the right to catch you. And once you get to the middle, this middle one gets triggered and that turns on both controllers, which makes it counteract its steering and stay still in whatever position that it's at. And of course, once you go off, you go to the right, it'll go back to the left and, you know, and vice versa. If you need a better explanation, I'm sure Khan or someone else can do something like that. Or just ask in the comments or join the Discord and I can give you some very detailed, you know, tips or streams or whatnot. Okay, moving on. So it's pretty straightforward from here. You just connect, you know, the logic gates to the perspective controllers and Bob's your uncle, really. Like now you have something that moves according to what you see. It's pretty it's pretty easy. Uh, the range isn't great. I th actually, the range isn't that bad. I'm just afraid of the spud gun actually not hitting the the bots because of I don't know because of something <laughs> but yeah so that'll work um, you can see it tracks anybody me characters cows any other units that might be spawned in and so that is how you do the basic uh, turret logic setup now what I'm going to do is do the scanning logic which is actually really really simple you saw this middle bearing right here. All you have to do is just take this middle controller. I'm gonna set it at a 90 degree, uh, 90 degree scan. And so it's like gonna be a full 80, 180 degrees. So basically it'll turn right 90 degrees and that'll turn it to the right. And then it turns back 90 degrees, which turns it straight. Then it turns left another 90 degrees, which turns it all the way to the left. And then it turns back. So it goes back straight. And so basically it'll just loop that. You hit the loop button and I'm going to have it on a switch because, yeah, yeah, I think having it on a switch is good. So I'll just put the switch right here and you press on and it starts to scan. So essentially it kind of scans this entire coastline for any baddies that might be standing here. So it's pretty fast. So hopefully it's not gonna be too bad and it won't always hit uh, always it's since a robot coming through especially if it goes lower somehow or comes across higher and comes across this way But at this point, it's pretty much going to get picked up by that wall turret and get <laughs> pretty much decimated <laughs> I haven't removed that extra gun yet So I should probably do that next and so if you want to protect your spud gun This is the most important thing. Hopefully they don't fix this in a patch But no robot wants to go and buy a saw blade. I haven't tested out on bots yet or the big bosses the big farm bots yet uh, so I'm not going to say it's hundred percent perfect, but essentially any robots that come by here will be, you know, eventually pause and go backwards because they won't want to swing at this thing right here. So there you go. And it pretty much picks up on it. And I might need to actually decrease the amount of torque inside these, uh, controllers. So these left and right controllers seem to be moving a bit too fast. So we're going to actually change that down to 180 degrees on the left and 180 degrees on the right. Uh, whoops. So it's basically just to your preference. It's not a super big deal on like how fast exactly it needs to be, but you don't want it to move too fast so it doesn't like accidentally off, you know, miss trigger or something like that. But 180 degrees to 220 is probably the good sweet spot for the left and right turning sensors controllers. And so once you get that, you pretty much have a working turret. It looks really ugly, I know. I will be painting it shortly. Uh, do I have any paint ammo on me right now? I don't think I do. There we go. And this light will just go off or turn on every time a sensor is triggered and that goes there. I mentioned earlier that you will need four logic gates because now we are gonna do the shooting logic of the turret. This is really easy, pretty straightforward. All you need to do is just have any AND gate. We're just gonna put this AND gate right here and connect it to the middle OR gate. So basically, if any one of these sensors are triggered, it's going to go to this AND gate, and this AND gate will connect to the spud gun, causing the spud gun to shoot once the sensor gets triggered. However, if you have seen in my previous episode, uh, I set up a, I guess a farm clock that's always ticking. It is a four logic gate clock right here, and this connects to another one right there. It's just a relay, but I'm honestly just going to uh, just connect it directly right here. It's a bit I think it's a bit quicker. I'm not entirely sure yet. I'll test it out later, but you basically connect that clock 
to a AND gate to the AND gate right here. So that way, whenever this is on, it starts flickering and that causes the rapid fire effect of the spud gun. And next is to attach the ammo crate to this spud gun. I'm pretty sure that's pretty easy to do. I'll do that shortly, but yeah. So we've done that in pretty quick time. <laughs> it's pretty easy to set up, pretty quick to set up and you can be able to farm your bots or to farm your farm. <laughs> Defend your farm. Wow, I have my words are not working today. Defend your farm and pretty quickly within a couple in-game hours. So that's like two or three minutes. So now that you've got the turret set up, all you need to do is just connect it to ammo. I am going to connect this crate of ammo to the turret. If I can. And Bob's your uncle. So now if I turn on the clock, which I will do, hopefully it won't waste a lot of ammo, but it'll waste some, it's okay. Turn it on, and essentially this is a an and, 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 nor, I believe, clock. You just connect them all in a circle, and they just start flickering. I believe there's better ways to do this, actually, but this is the way that works for me. <laughs> so, okay, so now the system is on. All systems are go. I believe I might have screwed up something. You just press this button to fix that. Let me know if you want a tutorial on this side piece right here. I'll, I can get that out there, but I won't do it this episode. Now that you've got this turret system on, you're going to want to paint this red and voila, Bob's your uncle. It, sh it just shot me. <laughs> I don't know exactly what more to say about it, but it works and it will get up to four or so shots. Uh, four shots is what it takes to kill a hay bot. And so, that's that's about it. So that concludes this tutorial section of the episode. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can understand any of that. Hopefully you understood most of that and can do it yourself now if you want to on your own farms. But the next thing is going to be a, uh, a mineral or resource transporter. So I'm going to have a transport line from this part of the farm down to that part of the farm so I can transport any sort of bots or pieces and other resources and scrap to the to the actual refiners that I'm going to place over there. But now what I'm going to do is actually just <laughs> completely fix this OP turret. Okay, so I may have just goofed. <laughs> I think I just goofed a little bit. So I accidentally broke the whole turret and uh, now it's not going to be connected to the defense system. So I'm going to have to defend this wall by myself. So that means you get then a little extra episode. <laughs> Uh, length time because I'm gonna have to wait to fix this until the next night and then we'll get it working But for now, let's just see how this whole system works. All right It looks like my turrets are working we're gonna come in here and They're backing off. They're having a good old time uh, These guys are gonna get killed this guy hasn't been quite set up yet, so that's that's okay. I think I heard the turret over on that coastline go off, so that means that it worked. However, we're gonna need definitely another turret right where that robot is standing right there. He's just standing there menacingly, so that's, that's okay. Uh, let's see, what else did we miss? It looks like something is shooting at something, but I'm not entirely sure where. Oh well, that's fine. I would say that worked out quite well. Even though I messed up this side of the, you know, of the whole thing, I think it still wasn't that bad. All right, let's get this all cleaned up and this gun set up and then let's do another raid. This will be a level six wave three tomorrow night. So it'll be a lot more robots. All right, we have about 30 seconds until the next raid. I believe it is a level six wave three. If I'm not mistaken, let us turn on our defenses. Go stand post. I am so lazy and just like out of materials. I could make it out of metal if I wanted to since I have so much metal. That thing's already full and I have two extra and we're going to get a lot more tonight. But I want to build like a watchtower or something right here in the middle so that I can have a better vantage point. But until then, let's just let's just check it us out. Let's see if this works and see how many shots or how many swings with a hammer I'll have to take in one night for a level three or a wave three, level six. Uh, thing rubber. It looks like. All right. 
I'm looking over to the side. It looks like the turret over on that side is done well. It's taken out that Haybot. Of course, the front turrets are doing well. I believe there is... Oh, there was something, but there's some more Haybots over on this side coming up. Coming in. I think that that turret over there is sensing something that it shouldn't be. So I might need to move the sensors. However, it looks like it took care of any of the bad guys that were in that area. Uh, yeah, it did. Okay. And then on this side too, it also took care of some bad guys. Ah, uh, man, there's just so much going on. I couldn't, <laughs> you can't catch it all. But yeah, so it looks like it's sensing this component kit right here again. Okay. Well, that's good though. I'm like, I'm not going to complain. It's, it's just a component kit. It's just a few spuds that I'm losing from that. So yeah. Okay. I believe I can now safely say this is a flawless. Of course, there's an asterisk next to the word flawless, but this is a flawless system. Honestly, I can add another turret right there in the middle and hopefully nothing gets by. But right now, this says I didn't have to shoot a single spud gun. All I had to do was just turn off the system and turn it on again. And wow, <laughs> I'm so happy that I've actually been able to do this. So hopefully this episode was helpful for you guys to kind of see how I've done it. My thought process and how this works, especially this choke point dual turret dual turret choke point setup right now. This oh look at these component kits. This is great. I really need these. But yeah. So, as always, I hope you guys have a great day, afternoon, night, morning, or evening, and whatever time of the world it is, I'll come right back with you tomorrow with a new system for transporting these goodies over to the main base. But I'll see you guys next time.